I'll just show you this boiler guys uh what it is this house has been empty for a while now so we've got a full strip down this boiler service it all uh, probably need new new nozzle i always change the nozzle on the service anyway it's got a deaerator on it there a metal one uh, it looks like it's had a leak on that um condensed trap at some point so we'll have a look at that as well uh, it'll have new nozzle new flexi hoses on it uh, just switch the Mains cold water on now, making sure there's no leaks on any of the hot and cold. To be fair, it all looks it all looks well lagged, uh, but none of it was drained down. So uh, hopefully none of them has been frozen. So what I'll do is I'll strip it all down. I don't even know if there's any oil in the tank, um, but if we can get it going, we'll get it going. If not, we'll have to get some oil. But yeah, that's pretty much the job anyway. So uh, this is one of the first Worcester heat slaves they brought out. This is the one with the external condensate strap. It's got the downward firing burner. I think it's a Riello. Well, uh, well, I on these. Um, uh, I check the expansion first pressure as well. I take the baffles out of it. I clean the secondary heat exchanger. There's just like six screws on top, and then the finishes pull out on these. Uh, the flue, the flue's got a bracket at the top. It's not, not screwed at the bottom, so we can pop a screw in there. Other than that, it's a bit of crap there, but we'll have a look at that anyway. Make sure it's all good. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's just a uh, full service. Strip it all out, take the buffers out of it. You can normally tell with an oil boiler straight away if it's burning right. Because it should be nice, it should be a little bit of red left in the bottom of it rather than all black soot. But we'll uh, we'll get it all done anyway. So yeah, I'll uh, clean the condensate strip out as well uh, and try and get it going. So I'm just pressurizing the heating system back up now. Um obviously pressure, pressure on there should be it should be at one bar. There isn't actually a low pressure switch on these. But what one bar is good. So I'll um get a bit of pressure in it. I'll um nip round and uh, bleed the radiators in a bit. But I just want to make sure the system's just pressurised up. Make sure there's no leaks. Uh, just thought I'd show you inside the oil boiler. I've just got the burner dropped out now. Uh, the hoses do definitely need replacing. They look quite split. Um, I don't know if you can see in there. It's quite. It looks quite clean for an oil boiler it's no soot anyway which is a good sign uh the second that's the secondary heat exchanger just whip the cover off that clean that out just just got to check the seal on it make sure the wood is okay around the outside um sometimes they can leak and then you get products of combustion coming back into the room that's a sample point for the flu uh, expansion vessel feels nice and light the hose is a little bit kinked but we'll check the pressure on it anyway you can normally tell straight away on these if they've got water in because they're super heavy uh, but that one feels okay uh, four bolts hold this front on so whip that out and then the baffles pull out of it so yeah they're nice and easy to service these the newer ones are better to be fair with the front front Riolo burners i prefer them but yeah these aren't too bad uh, so we'll get it get it all stripped out get it all uh, scraped out inside hoovered out and then set back up hopefully if we've got some oil but yeah i just thought i'd show you inside uh how a heat slave how a heat slave works this is uh inside the main Main heat exchanger for the oil boiler for the heat slave. All this will clean off. Should really have gloves on to be fair, but this one's not too bad. These baffles pull out, they're just on a pin. You can pull them out, scrape all them off, clean them all, make that all nice and tidy. But yeah, this it's probably just been sat a while, this to be fair. But this 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 is quite clean for an oil boiler, you see how there's no sort. So it shows it's been burning right anyway, which is always good to see. If it's sooty, you won't you won't want to do this without masking gloves on. Because it is horrendous when the when the oil roll is sort of yeah, this one this one will clean out quite nicely. So uh, just pull them baffles out, clean them off, um, and then we can start building it back up again. Then. So that's that's what the, that's what the baffles look like. All they need to do is deflect the heat onto the side of the onto the side of the box because obviously you've got waterways waterways in here. Uh, so I can give these all a good clean out. So these don't look too bad at all. Um, Obviously, they're, they're labelled top and bottom, but you always want to take the baffles out um, in the order they come out. Don't don't get your baffles mixed up because on some boilers they can be a nightmare. So what I always do is stand them stand them the way they come out, so you never get them confused. So this this needs a good clean out now. We've got a little uh, Makita Makita vac I use for these. Um, the secondary heat exchangers are easy to clean as well on these, but what what you don't don't ever use. Uh, 
wire brushes work like that on the secondary heat exchangers. I normally just wipe them off with like a damp rag because they're, they're coated in a, a special thing to stop the stuff sticking. So yeah, just got to be careful. You can scrape these out with a wire brush or whatever you like really. Um, but don't use uh, wire brushes on the secondary heat exchanger because it can acker them up. And then the burner, the burner, it's just just to strip down on the burner, change the hoses and then set it all back up and then I always make a note on my service sheet if it needs any any bits like the AAV sometimes leak to be fair. This one doesn't look too bad. The old ones used to get like the flow switches used to leak and stuff. But again, this one doesn't look too bad. Too bad. It's probably had a little leak on the flow switch there at some point, but it's not leaking now. Uh, and then just set, set it all back up again, as I say. So nice and easy, really. Okay, so I've hoovered this out now. It's all, uh, it's all, it's all nice and clean. So that, that's that's decent for an oil boiler. All the sides are nice and clean. They've got no um, got no big bit sticking on it anyway. So that's that's all good. But I've cleaned all the baffles off. You don't have to be too aggressive with these. Just a uh, just a steel brush, just a wire brush. And it cleans them, cleans them nicely. So that that's quite clean for oil boiler. We've got quite quite a bit out of it, and I've hoovered it all out anyway. So uh, that's clean. So we can put the put the baffles back in. So that's what it looks like after the baffles are all back in. When you put the the door on, um, just got to be careful. You've got to tighten them up opposites. So I don't know if it tells you on these. It probably might tell you on the door to be fair. But yeah, always always tighten them up opposites. Obviously, check your check your door seals as well. Same as any boiler. So check check your seals. Make sure they're all okay, all okay. And then just tighten tighten opposites. So you don't uh, put strain on one side. I don't think the uh, blast tube had been off in a while. It was really, really awkward to get off. But hopefully, it looks like it's been a little bit damp at some point as well. But we should be able to clean all that up. Internally, it doesn't look too bad. We we'll obviously change that nozzle, clean the electrodes up. And then uh, hopefully it runs. Hopefully the motor and everything's not got wet. I can take the fan off, but it seems to be spinning. So it should be good. Should be good. But I'll uh, check the photo cell and everything, make sure it's all operating correctly. But yeah, just, it was just a bit of a bugger to get off that one. But we'll uh, clean all that up, spray it all up, and then uh, it should be good. Just give this blast tube a spray in ordinary, just uh, maintenance spray, WD-40 basically. Uh, just, uh, there's nothing wrong with it, it just all needs all this crap cleaning off. So I'll let that soak for 10 minutes or so. And then we'll just wire brush it all down. I've only got one of the long life bio hoses in the van, so I'll, I'll change it for what I've got, and then I'll uh, I've got to come back anyway Ed, to finish off in the property. So I'll uh, I'll change the other. I'll change them. I want them both to be the same, really. Uh, so yeah, that's it with the new nozzle in. Um, I always move the electrodes out of the way just to do the nozzle, but you always want to set the gap back up the same how it was. This is why you always want to change your hoses every year, guys, because look, you just always split on the end. The other one's the same. Probably exaggerated that a bit, but they are quite bad. So always always change the hoses, they only take 30 seconds. And then and then you know you're good for at least the trouble is people don't always get the boiler serviced every year. So if you if you do if you do everything right, at least you know at least you know you've left everything how it should be. So just undo them and then just change them like for like. So yeah, it's just a warning. Because that that splits, that's gonna stink somebody's house out and you're gonna get in a lot of trouble because you don't want to be spilling oil everywhere. So just uh, change them. What I'm gonna do is because um, this hose has been wrapped around these cables at some point. I'm just going to drain the heating system down quickly, uh, whip this hose out, change this hose. It looks a bit kinked anyway. And um, I can check the pressure of the expansion vessel then as well while it's all drained out. It should be at one bar. It feels quite light anyway, but I'll check it. Because I don't like the look of that hose. It's clearly been... Well, I don't know what somebody's done, but we'll uh, just quickly take that out. It'll only take 30 seconds and uh, put it all back properly how it should be. It gives me a chance to look at the system water quality anyway. It doesn't actually look too bad at all. It looks like it's had plenty of inhibitor in it at some point. But I'm going to flush it out anyway and re-inhibit it. But it doesn't look too bad. I've seen far, far worse than that. Well, I've uh, removed this expansion vessel now. The pressure's fine on it. It's set at one bar. I thought it sounded okay anyway. Um, so i just changed this hose now. 
and then put it back together so at least it's not wrapped all around these cables now. Should make it easy for the next guy as well. You just got to be careful. Sometimes what can happen, these hoses can get blocked because they're quite small ho uh, hole inside and you can end up with uh, trapped, trap pressure inside the expansion vessel. So when you take the hose off, it can flood the boiler. So you just got to be a little bit careful, but normally they're not too bad. So I've just come to fire this boiler up and it sounds like it's got a few issues. It's, the pump sounds like it's stuck to me. It's just humming and we're going straight to lockout. We've got, we've got pump pressure, so I'll have to just strip it down and see what's going on again. So guys, having stripped all this boiler down, I've serviced it all, but I've got no got no pump pressure or no oil. Um, the tank is so overgrown, I'm probably going to have to put it at risk anyway. Potentially at risk, because obviously I can't, can't see all the way around it. It is... Well, I'll go out and show you. It is, it is a double bundy tank, but the brambles are just so high around it. Um, so what I'll say is I'll have, to, I'll have to get all this cleared. Then I can inspect the tank. As I say, it is a bunded one, so it's probably okay. But obviously it's brambles and they, they look quite sharp. So I'm going to potentially at risk the tank because I can't see around it. It could have a hole cut in the back of it for all I know. Uh, we can inspect the tank, then we can get some oil. And then we can get the boiler working then. But yeah, that's what the problem is. I mean, it could even be turned off. But I'm not I'm not crawling through all them brambles to have a look. So, uh, as I say, it's, uh, it's at risk for the time being. Um, because it, it could have, the oil could have been stolen. It could have, it, anything could have happened to it. It could have cut the tank. So I'll uh, just put it potentially at risk. We'll get all the brambles and everything cut down around it. We'll get some oil delivered. And then we can inspect the tank properly. And then we can get all the boiler commissioned and everything. Or recommissioned I should say yeah that's that's the crux of it I can't go any further now because obviously I've got no fuel so what, all I can do the boiler's all ready to go anyway so the heating system is all filled up but obviously I can't check the radiators um, but yeah I'll, uh, I'll uh, connect that valve back up I'll leave it switched off and then we'll, uh, we'll come and uh, we'll come back and, uh, when we've got some oil quick tip the first thing you always want to do when you've got a oil boiler going to lock out like this one was just Put your pump pressure gauge on and make sure you've got make sure you've got pump pressure if you haven't got any pump pressure it's going to be your oil pump or or no oil but yeah first thing you always want to do um no boy sometimes when you crack it it looks like you've got oil like i did a minute ago but there's the zero pump pressure i've cracked that valve down there there's nothing coming out of it so uh i would say it's definitely a supply issue 